Good morning. I'm the Reverend Robert Morris, and I'm the priest in residence at St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Essex Fells, New Jersey. And I'm delighted to welcome you, parishioners, and any others who are watching the service to our celebration of the seventh Sunday after Easter, which is also known as Ascension Sunday. Today, we celebrate the final resurrection appearance of our Lord and his being received uh, into heaven. And as we do every week to begin our service, we'll have some music, a prelude, the melody of See the Conqueror Mounts in Triumph, one of the Ascension hymns by our organist, John Tabarna. <laughs> You should be able to find a service leaflet on the website, the place where you access the service, which will give you the text of the service as we begin our worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we gather with joy to worship God, let us call to mind our need of divine forgiveness. For Jesus, you healed the sick. Kyrie eleison. Forgave sinners and welcomed the outcasts. Christe eleison. You breathe your spirit to heal our souls and bring us strength. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we continue our worship but the first three verses of All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name, hymn number 450 in the Episcopal Hymn.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, who has exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven, do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. O God, as blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to perceive that according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us hear now the word of God. The first lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 1. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks I'll be reading from Psalm 68. Uh, I will read to the asterisk and you will respond responsibly from there. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name. Exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name, rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows. God in his holy habitation. God gives the solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. The rebels shall live in dry places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai. You sent a gracious rain, O God, upon your inheritance. You refresh the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe, to, ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. God of Israel, giving strength and power to his people. Blessed, Blessed be God. God. And now the epistle from 1 Peter chapter 4. 
Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, unto the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary the devil prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now as we prepare our hearts and minds to hear the gospel of the Lord, we sing together at the name of Jesus, which is hymn 435 in your hymnal and is in the service leaflet, the first three verses. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people. To give eternal life to those whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. And so now you on earth, so now Father glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I've made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept the word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you and they have believed that you sent me. I'm asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. 
And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So today is the Sunday after Ascension Day, which was last Thursday, the day on which the church celebrates the final magnificent resurrection appearance of Christ to his apostles in the great 50 days between Passover and Shavuot, the Feast of Pentecost. The Gospel of Luke relates how Jesus was received into the cloud of God's glory so that he, as our hymn talked about, went up the central height to the Father's throne and to the perfect rest of the Father in this ancient symbolism of the world below and the world here in Middle Earth and all the heavens above. So what's going on here? And what does it have to do with our lives in the middle of our circumstances, which are kind of a maelstrom of all kinds of things going on? We're in the middle of a pandemic, we're in the middle of an economic crisis, we're in the middle of various sorts of personal challenges. So what if he sits at the right hand of God, as the creed says? Well, let me talk about the ascension under the aspect of three different images. And the first one may seem unlikely to you, but let me come back to it. It's the image of a hurricane or a cyclone, of a circling storm with the eye of the cyclone in the middle, the comparatively still eye in the center of the storm. It's a biblical image of God who speaks to Job, who's had troubles of his own, out of a whirlwind. And the still, small, calm voice that the prophet Elijah hears on Mount Sinai, in his heart, speaking from the heart of God, speaks to Job out of the whirlwind of all the events that are going on in his life and says, stand up, exert your strength in the midst of all of this. The first image is of a cyclone. The second is the one that's biblical and which is referred to in the biblical stories, which is of Jesus, of Christ, of the Son of Man, ascending, and again, an ancient symbolism up above and below, ascending to the Father to present humankind and the world, to offer it all to God for sanctification. And the third image isn't quite as clear, but it's the image of the weaver of the warp and woof with God, with the ferocious love of God, the determined love of God being the warp and the circumstances of the world being the roof. So that every thread of our lives crosses the thread of the love of God. That first image was powerfully driven home to me years ago when we had the very tail end of a hurricane in northern New Jersey and as the center, which was rather large, came over South Orange, I took the dog for a walk. You may have heard me mention this before, but I took the dog for the walk and suddenly the skies, the sun came out, the sky was blue, crystal clear blue sky. And as I took the, 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 the dog for a walk around the block, there was no wind to speak of. There was this radiant stillness and everything which had been drenched with so much rain was startlingly alive. And as I got about three quarters of the way through the, 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 the walk, was looking at all the colors and the aliveness of all these bushes and trees. And I said, well, well this is otherworldly. And then I thought, no, it's not. This is this world come fully alive. 
and all of its goodness and all of its aliveness. I took the dog back and half an hour later, the other side of the hurricane came in and we were back in the maelstrom. But I've never forgotten that center. What does that have to do with God and with the ascension? Well, in, in, in many ways, the divine presence in the midst of the world is like that still center. The poet Gerard Manley Hopkins, the Jesuit poet, talks about the deep down freshness things. And in the center of the hurricane was this aliveness, this deep down freshness things, and all around it was the maelstrom. I'm not an expert on the dynamics of cyclones and circular storms, but I did read enough to know that the eye of the hurricane is essential for the formation of the hurricane. If you don't have, if the eye doesn't form, to a certain extent you're better off, but it's chaos and all kinds of things can happen. As the storm begins to form, the eye is like, like this convection place in the midst of it, which is fueling, but organizing organizing the hurricane. So that which Christ ascends to is something like the center of the hurricane because he's ascending to deeper sense of union with God. And God is this organizing center in the midst of a kind of chaos. It's chaos and order, chaos and order. And this still, small, determined center of divine love, while it's not causing directly everything out there, it is still in the midst of influencing it. So let's take a look at the issue of ascension directly, the going up. Ascension in these passages is used in the same sense precisely in the same sense of ascension to the throne. As the queen ascends to the throne. Christ, in this ancient way of thinking in the scriptures, ascends to join the council of angels that surrounds God. The ancient prophets, by the way, ascension is not limited to Christ. There's the story of Elijah ascending in the fiery chariot to, 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 to God. There's the Jewish interpretation of the passage about the king of Jerusalem, Melchizedek, ascending into heaven to be part of the council of the wise angels and human beings in biblical mythology. And then there's Enoch who walked with God and was not, and the, and the rabbi said, well, he was taken into heaven. So God in God's rulership of the world is, intimate, is an intimate relationship with the righteous who participate in that still, calm, determined, ferocious love, which also has to see justice done for love to prevail, that exerts an influence in the world. It helps to bend things like a magnetic field in the direction of life flourishing in the best way possible. So that ascension image is again an ascension to the place, the deep place in the center of things that can bend things in a different direction. Not so much through direct control as through influence. And especially influence, influence by those who are captivated by that love. Now our Psalm, which is an ancient telling of the Exodus from Egypt, and the taking of the promised land lists all kinds of things that that ferocious love does. It befriends those who are marginal and in difficulty and, and who are vulnerable, the widows and the orphans. It establishes a place where it can be accessed on its holy hill so that its influence can pervade people's lives and help them turn the fragmented, sometimes chaotic, realities of their own minds and their own behavior in the direction of a more ordered and intentional devotion to the same kind of determined and passionate love for that which is good. And finally, 
my final metaphor is of the work and the woof, because it means that this magnetic power of God's calm, deep, fresh, life-giving, organizing, life-enhancing, chaos dispelling love is something that if we allow ourselves to be aware of it, we run across again and again in our lives. It's always there. We may wander off into more disorder, but if we are conscious of the fact that that, that, of that thread of God's love is always present, always ready to be crossed, we'll, we'll, we'll be more aware of those moments in our minds when a kind of God awareness, all those moments of thanks, help, wow, sorry, arise in our hearts and help us connect with that organizing influence which wants to draw us into its orbit and turn the sometimes stormy areas of our life into something that we can move through with greater assurance and power. I've seen this work in so many ways in people's lives. It's a little like what Martin Luther King said to Lyndon Johnson when King went to Johnson and said that we really needed the civil rights laws. And Johnson said, well, I want to tell you that's just not the way the political winds are blowing. What did MLK Jr. say to him? Well, I'll just have to change the wind. And he went out and did that. He changed the way the political winds were blowing so that Johnson had the support that he needed to pass the civil rights legislation. There was a man, flawed like any other man, learning like any other man, learning like Jesus learned through his life to access that deep center so that it was a taproot within him he could call on to let it take, it, take, him, to let it take him step by step closer to God. There was a man who knew how to bend history. And the Spirit of God, the advocate that comes to us, that we celebrate the coming to us at Pentecost, is exactly God's gift of that access to that deep, calm center of the storm, which is, which is in the very center of reality, in the heaven of heavens that surrounds all things and pervades all things. That advocate can help us move through all of the circumstances of our life with an ever-deepening devotion to that love which casts out fear, that love which can cast out disorder and evil. And even when it can't make things different, can give us the strength to walk through the storm with our head held high. Amen. And now let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the, of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. For our parish, that we may enter ever more deeply into the constant sweep of the Spirit of Christ that flows through our hearts, carrying our prayers to the Father, we pray to the Lord. For the leaders of all the nations as we face challenges together, especially the President and Congress of our own country, the Governor of this state, and all in authority, that they may make wise decisions for the well-being of all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the grace of the living Christ, that we may continue the works of Christ and be instruments of God's love and be blessings to the human family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For families that may, God, that may God watch over them, bless them with every good gift and fill their hearts with peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those celebrating a birthday, Deborah Chance, Robert Bayard, and Bill Panich, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are sick or suffering, especially Ed Camper, Renee Markin, Marino family, Ann Matlack, Mendoza family, Dave Miller, Nicholas Nuno, Paulette, and the Richardson and Dickoffs families, for those who are troubled or hard pressed, especially those unemployed, that they may find the courage, strength, and healing in their several circumstances. We pray to the Lord. For all people at immediate risk in this pandemic, for the frontline workers, those all who work in dangerous conditions, those who risk themselves and others ignorantly or foolishly, those who face financial hardship, those who are without food, and all who are hard pressed, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died, especially Patsy Coward Colt, in whose memory the altar is adorned today, and for those who have died recently, that we may progress more deeply along the way that leads to life, we pray to the Lord. For the special needs and concerns we carry in our hearts. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us, and thank you to all of you who uh, continue your faithful support to St. Peter's Church. We're fortunate uh, uh, in that we applied for one of the PPP grants, the payroll protection grants as a church. Um, the, the laws allowed uh, churches as small businesses to do that. Uh, most particularly for the sake of our nursery school, uh, which the spirit of which the economic realities of the pandemic threatened very direly and that we did get that grant and therefore we're able to sustain the nursery school until it can open again we certainly hope by the fall so we thank the diligent work of our of our bookkeeper dj posey with the support of the wardens in getting that grant for us but we still depend on the regular offerings and it's wonderful that so many of you have stepped up to continue to support the church in this time. It helps support ministries like the regular phone calls that go to people um, at, uh, at Crane's Mill um, and the regular operations of the church. 
so that we can be strong when we come back together. Also, uh, hope that many of you will join us for our online class at 11 o'clock. We had a little Zoom difficulties last week at our coffee hour, but a week from Sunday, we will be also having another coffee hour and hopefully Zoom won't go on Fritz. But this Sunday, we'll have our second session of taking a look at Jesus' sayings in the Sermon on the Mount. The way we can help build in ourselves that reception point for the calm and ferocious love that I'm talking about is to really get to know Jesus better. And as he says in the gospel this morning, he's imparted his words to us so that they can be in us and help us with our own process of growth into the glorification of that blossoming love in our hearts. And our senior warden um, is here to share with us some news of the search committee. Thank you, Father Bob. Uh, best, the uh, vestry met last Sunday, and uh, one of the um, reports was from our search committee, which has been working diligently during um, this uh, time that we are uh, in our homes. They uh, received a total of seven candidates and are working diligently, hopefully within the month, next month, month and a half, uh, to narrow that down. Uh, to present the vestry with um, candidates that we can then um, further interview and determine. So we have some very positive uh, news from the, from the uh, search committee and we look forward uh, for them completing their task and presenting us with a uh, you know, potential rectors come, um, that we can look forward to in the fall. Thank you. The Zoom access code for our class at 11 o'clock uh, is in the e-blast that came to you this week and is in the service leaflet on the website, and we hope to see many of you there. And now we come to the peace. I invite you in your homes to stand. And in the peace, we may be sending peace in our hearts to others for their well-being. And again, if you're with loved ones at home, you have the luxury of feeling free, most of you, to exchange the peace more directly. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. And we pray together, O oh God, who has taught us that in quietness and confidence shall be our strength, that the peace of Christ reign in our hearts and be shed abroad through us as a blessing for all who cross our path. Amen. And now we have a selection from our collection of videos of our choir singing. If you love me, keep my commandments, especially appropriate for this Ascension Day when we're remembering the words of Christ, which give us the commandments of God.
Thank you, Chris Corso, for helping us achieve this intermingling of, of past performances of the choir uh, in our services. Now we enter into a time of offering ourselves in prayer. First of all, we'll have a prayer once again for all of us in this time of pandemic. This hour we turn to you, O Lord, in full knowledge of our frailty, our vulnerability, and our great need as your mortal creatures. We cry to you as one human family, unsure of the path ahead, unequal to the unseen forces around us, frightened by the sickness and death that seem all too real to us now. Stir up your strength and visit us, O Lord. Be our shield and rock and hiding place. Guide our leaders, scientists, our nurses, and doctors. Give them wisdom and courage and determination. Make even this hour, especially as we begin to open up, a season of blessing for us, that in fear we find you mighty to save, in illness or death we find the cross to be none other than the way of life. Be our light and the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this moment, leading us to behavior which protects ourselves and others. All this we ask in the name of the one who bore all infirmities, Jesus Christ, our risen and ascended and victorious Lord. Amen. Let us pray for families. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sets the solitary in families, we commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. But far from them, every root of bitterness, the desire of vainglory, and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness. And together in constant affection, those who in joined in holy union have been made one flesh. Turn the hearts of the parents to the children, the hearts of the children to the parents. And so enkindle fervent charity among us all that we may evermore be kindly affection one to another. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your servants, to give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all humankind. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we earnestly pray, give us that due sense of all your mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May God the Father, who raised Christ from among the dead, raise you from the deadening power of sin. Amen. Amen. May the Christ, who triumphed over the powers of darkness and brought life and immortality to light, fill you with the power of his victory. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit breathed upon the apostles in the upper room, shed abroad God's love in our heart and work through our lives. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of the all merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And now we sing together Crown him with many crowns. The first three verses.
Let us go forth in the name of the risen and ascended Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And now we, as our transition back to the ordinary life of the world, John must once again play for us a selection of music. 